SPF, PA++++, broad spectrum, UVA, UVB. There are so many unfamiliar terms when it comes to sunscreens. How to choose the sunscreen that you need. Hey Wish Trenders, it's your sister Eunice here. Today on Skimpedia, we're going to talk about everything you need to know about sunscreens. If you don't wear sunscreen, it speeds up skin aging, increases dark spots, hyperpigmentation, flushing, and even the risk of skin cancer. But when you go out to buy a sunscreen and you take a good look at the product, there is so much information on the packaging such as SPF, PA++, broad spectrum, chemical sunscreen, physical sunscreen, and it's so hard to understand everything. So today, I'll tell you the easy way to successfully choose the sunscreen that you need out of all the other sunscreens. So make sure you stay tuned in. If you look at the packaging of a sunscreen, you'll see that it tells you what type of sunscreen it is. That's why you need to understand what all the information means in order to choose a good sunscreen. First, you need to choose a sunscreen that blocks both UVA and UVB. I'll tell you what UVA and UVB means. UVA are ultraviolet rays with strong skin penetration, causing aging, affecting us the most. UVA has a longer wavelength, so they penetrate through clouds and windows. In particular, people who work by the window or drive a lot can be exposed to UVA a lot. UVB are ultraviolet rays that cause strong skin irritation, which can cause spots, freckles, burns, and skin cancer by burning the outside of the skin. Since we know now what UVB and UVA are, let's look at the packaging of a sunscreen. The first thing you will see on the packaging is SPF. SPF is the index that shows how effective the product is in blocking UVB. The higher the number, the more protection, but it can get removed if you sweat or touch your face a lot. So it is very important to reapply every two to three hours to maintain the effect. Some other indicators on the packaging are PA+, PPD, broad spectrum, critical wavelength, and UVA Ultra. These things are all indexes that show how effective the product is in blocking UVA. UVA indicators slightly vary depending on the country, so it's essential that we understand this. We made a little chart so that you can see it all at once. Get ready to screenshot. Now that we know what all of these sunscreen indicators mean, we need to be able to choose a sunscreen that works for me and that can be reapplied when needed. Because no matter how high the SPF and PA are, the effects of the sunscreen can decrease in a matter of hours if it comes in contact with sweat and sebum. First, I'll tell you about the different types of sunscreens. There are three types, chemical, physical, and combination sunscreens. I'll tell you the pros and the cons of the three types. Make sure you keep an eye out for the sunscreen that might work for you. Chemical sunscreens absorb UV rays into the skin and dissipate them by releasing them as heat. The pros are that it doesn't have a white cast and has a good application. That's why it's preferred by most skin types, but especially preferred by dry skin types. Chemical sunscreens are removed easily just by a single cleanse, so they often are used for daily use. The cons are that it blocks UV rays by absorbing them into the skin and releasing them as heat. So it's not recommended for babies, pregnant women, acne prone skin, or skin with rosacea or eczema. Physical sunscreens do not absorb into the skin and reflect the UV rays. Since it doesn't absorb into the skin, it's recommended for acne prone skin, skin with rosacea, and eczema. Now, the cons are that it has a white cast and the application is a little bit rough. That's why it's more preferred by oily skin types rather than dry skin types. It's also often used when playing sports. It's recommended for outdoor and water activities. It doesn't get removed easily, which is definitely a plus, but since it is more difficult to remove, if you don't do a thorough double cleanse, it can cause breakouts. Combination sunscreens have a combination of all the pros and cons of a chemical and physical sunscreen. It has less of a white cast and has a good application. It depends on the sunscreen, but double cleansing is recommended. Now that we have all the basics of sunscreen down, we need to focus on the ingredients. 
If you take a good look at all the ingredients, you can predict whether the sunscreen is going to be a chemical sunscreen, physical sunscreen, whether or not it will be irritating for your eyes, and if there are any ingredients that contribute to marine pollution. So I will tell you about the main ingredients that you need to check. The ingredients that categorizes the types of sunscreens. The main ingredients in sunscreens according to their type. The main ingredients of chemical sunscreens include octinazate, avobenzone, ethyl hexyl salicylate, and the main ingredients of physical sunscreens include titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. The ingredients that cause sore eyes. If your eyes are sore when wearing sunscreen, it usually has to do with certain ingredients found in the sunscreen. Ingredients that irritate the eyes include oxybenzone, avobenzone, and octinazate. These ingredients are found in chemical sunscreens. Oxybenzone and octinacate are both ingredients found in chemical sunscreens, and they are both ingredients that contribute to marine pollution. That's why many brands these days use alternatives for these ingredients in their chemical sunscreen products. However, there are so many other environmental factors that causes marine pollution, so this is a topic that we should keep close attention to. In some studies, it's said that there are possibility that nano-sized physical sunscreen ingredients may damage your nerve cells. Also, there are other studies that say the nano-sized physical sunscreen ingredients may not damage the nerve cells. Both zinc oxide and titanium dioxide either do not penetrate or minimally penetrate the stratum corneum and underlying layers of the skin. This suggests that systematic absorption, hence toxicity, is very unlikely. In Korean beauty industry, non-nano-sized physical sunscreens are preferred by beauty customers. There are cases where you can find the word nano, non-nano written either on the product, packaging, or the product details page for physical sunscreens. Today, we explore the basics of sunscreens and the ingredients of sunscreens. How was it? Was it helpful for you guys? Let me give you a recap. How to choose a sunscreen. First, check the indicators on the sunscreen. Second, choose the type of sunscreen that you need. Third, don't forget to check the ingredient list of the sunscreen. The physical sunscreen, chemical sunscreen, and combination sunscreen products shown in today's video are great products that we recommend for our wish genders to use. All the links are in the description below, so please do check them out. If there's anything that you want me to cover on Skinpedia, make sure to comment below. Thank you guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, wish trenders!